Let's go over to our man, Mr. Tim Ord. And folks, you can find out and check out Tim at ord.oracle.com. Uh, Tim will be uh, on uh, this program uh, every Thursday at 20 past the hour. Uh, Tim, uh, welcome back to TFNN. Right. Long time. Been 20 years. I know, man. Is that so, crazy or what? Yeah, it's, it's crazy, isn't it? Just like so, that. Actually, go ahead. Just like that. No doubt about it. It's pretty amazing, man. Yeah. There's no doubt. I mean, uh, I think the yeah. first time that I actually had you on was like 1996. <laughs> but that's when we started? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Well. I know. Yeah, I've been... Uh... I, I think know. my mom died right around that 2003. I think that was right uh, somewhere in that time frame. So right. Well, anyhow, we're back. Yes, so, sir. Um, um, so, I what say, chart I do you, you want to start three with? Charts. Yes, I have them up. What okay, uh, we'll, we'll go through that weekly GDX. We'll kind of look at the bigger picture first. Okay, and, I have uh, it up right now. Uh, anyhow, this is a weekly chart, and it's, it's kind of a. I came across this. I've been screwing with it for a couple, three years, but anyhow, it's GDX and it has AD. Well, if you look at the top or the um, uh, how to begin here, let's see. Well, anyhow, we'll start with the bottom window is a weekly chart of the GDX up down volume percent. Okay. And what? I, and the next window up is the GDX advanced decline percent. Yes. So you got you got an up down volume indicator, then you got an advanced decline indicator both for GDX, and this is on a weekly time frame. Then I took a cumulative um, cumulative of both those up-down volume and advanced client indicators. Okay. And so that's what you see there. And I put a Bollinger Band on top of that. Yep. So uh, every time uh, this, this chart goes back only uh, to around 2010 because that's, that's as far as back those two indicators uh, went so they're not. I couldn't get them go back any further because I didn't have the information to do it. Yes, but it works really well on the bigger time frames. If you notice in the 2012 top, it 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 fell through the mid Bollinger band on the weekly time frame, and pretty much stayed below the mid Bollinger band all the way into about 2016. Look at that. Yeah, I uh, see that. Yeah, that was that was a four year sell signal. Right and. Um, and it worked pretty well. Then it gave a buy signal. It looks like about you know early 2016. Yep. And it stayed on that buy signal pretty much for a year and a half. And that was a good run. Then, yeah, that was a good run. Yeah, right. Yeah, it got that big move up and everything. Uh, so now there's this when both indicators close above the mid Bollinger Bands on a buy signal. When it closes below the mid Bollinger Bands, it's a sell signal. Nice. Got a nice. little bit, a uh, little bit messy in 2017. It kind of hovered around the mid-Bollinger band, uh, kind of warned you, know, like the uptrend was, was you know, failing there. But yeah. finally, uh, it was kind of a messy signal. Anyhow, in general, it moved down for another year and a half. Then in 2019, uh, it, it broke above the uh, both the mid-Bollinger band and stayed on that buy signal for a year and a half. Yep. And uh, then back in 2000. 21 looks like January or so. It fell below the Bollinger Band and pretty much stayed below that Bollinger Band until now. Right. And and it's been two years in that decline. So basically, it, it's um, if it kind of matches what the previous signals are, you're probably looking at a year and a half of rally here. Right. It just on, take on average of you know maybe two years, uh, but uh, this type of indicator doesn't get whipped or uh, once it gets on a buy or sell signal it stays there pretty much I mean, yeah i know which is pretty cool perfect. i can i can see that i can see that yeah, yeah definitely yeah so i'm thinking this is probably uh on a buy signal that may last over the next like, i got some other indicators kind of saying that as something similar to this but this bicycle may last uh you know it gets pretty much keep a bicycle right pretty much in this time frame in March. And this bicycle may persist for the next year and a half. Uh, so it'll be kind of interesting to see if that turns out to be the case. But as long as both indicators on the weekly time frame are above the mid-Bollinger band, 
the bicycle is in force, and that's what's happening right now. And that's pretty cool uh, because, so. you know, it's only 25 percent off its all-time high from that run in 2020. So that could be a nice run, man. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, let's flip to the now. We're going to flip to the next. Uh, okay. Uh, I have indicator, it. and it's a uh, it's this is a GDX again. This uh, and it's the the bottom window is the GDX daily advanced decline percent. Yeah. That's just what it is. And next, uh, it's an 18 day average of the uh, advanced decline percent. The next window up from the bottom is the GDX up down volume with 18 day average. And the top one is GDX. Okay. And what happens here is when the 18-day average of the advanced decline and up-down volume both get above 40, uh, then that's a, what I call a, a surge pattern happens. And the red lines show the times when this has happened. It doesn't happen every year. Um, it did happen once in 2021. Uh, it happened a couple of times in 2020. Once in 2019, once uh, 2016, but it just happened here on April 4th. Uh, April 4th, the advanced decline indicator. Uh, uh, yeah, April 4th closed at 45.98, and on the up-down volume, uh, that closed at 42.36. So it's well above the 40 range, almost similar to what happened in 2016. So even though this market's overbought. Uh, what this indicator suggests that the run's going to continue. So nobody's really expecting that. You know, oh, it's overbought. We got to sell everything. Well, this indicator just flipped to a surge pattern just two days ago. Right. So in general, you'll see some uh, maybe three, four down days. But in general, it's probably going to look something like 2016. Uh, yeah. or 2019. And we know Red that market markets season. can stay overbought for quite some time, Tim, right? Say what? That markets can stay overbought for quite some time. Right. That's what happens in bull markets, you know. And, you know, we've been really kind of a sloppy market, I mean, over the last, uh, since 2020. I mean, it went up, it went down, went sideways, broke right. below some previous lows that shouldn't have broke through. It did. Came back up again. Uh, so now I, I'm thinking this is going to be a pretty much of a steady uh, rally. I'd love to have this indicator all the way back to 2000. I wish I could have seen what happened back then. But 2000, from 2000, which was with the bottom in GDX and gold market, and rallied all the way to 2012, you know, it went up for basically 12, well, it did go up for 12 years. I, I know, you know, maybe we're due for another type of 2000 rally again. I don't know. But this rally, uh, according to these two indicators, one suggests that we got another year and a half to go. This rally here has probably got several weeks, if not months, to go. Yeah. Uh, so it's, we're kind of sitting at an unusual time here, how far things are going to go. Okay, so just, just stay, just stay there for a second, Tim. We've got a short break, and we're going to bring you back. And you know what's interesting, Tim, about that GDX? See, the GDX wasn't trading. It was, it was a new ETF. That's what's going on there. So there, there's, there is no info. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. Well, welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now down 28. You get the NASDAQ up 86. S&Ps are up 12. We're talking about our man, Mr. Tim Ord. And you can get hold of Tim, folks, at ord.oracle.com. And we are going over right now the, uh, the GDX chart. Um, yeah, so Tim, that you know, you have all the data. What happened is that this this ETF only started trading May twenty second of two thousand and six. That's why you can't go back to two thousand. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, I wish we could. I, I know that indicator. I know. But, okay, yeah. so uh, go ahead. Uh, but anyhow, it, it, it's it's something unusually going on in here. So, you know. If, if, I, I, I don't know how much time we had, so I sent, sent, sent over three charts. But I've been watching the uh, GDX to GLD ratio, or GDX uh, to gold ratio. Uh, is, and, is that the top of the second chart, Tim? Or do you want me to go to the third? Well, no, actually, it's, it's, I don't have that chart. Well, we, we, can, we can flip to the last chart you want, just to cover the S&Ps real quick. Oh, we got um, plenty of time. we got seven, eight minutes left. So we can, wherever you want to go, we can do all right, we'll, we'll go to that third chart. Okay, there we go. Um, it's, 
Yeah. Listen to this one, anyhow, folks. It, <laughs> go ahead. No, I'm just saying, listen to this one. I already looked at it. I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's a monthly chart of the SPYs, and uh, I have a Fibonacci relationship uh, on that, drawn on that, but I didn't show where it came from. That that Fibonacci relationship comes from the March 2020 low. Okay. And we didn't quite get to a 50% retracement, so I just wanted to point that out. But the pattern in there that, that I'm seeing is a head and shoulders bottom. And if you look at the March, um, my, my opinion is a sign of strength, your volume guy, so am I. Yep. And we busted through that trend line on a closing basis. Uh, so in my opinion, we had a sign of strength through a neckline. And if you do the measurement of this head and shoulders bottom, it has a target. You know, you take the bottom of the head and you, and you measure up to the neckline. You do that measurement, you come back to the 470 area. Well, the 470 area happens to be the uh, January high of 2022. So yep. I'm thinking, in general, that's where we're going to go this year. Nobody's um, really bullish here at all, but market wants to go up. And if you look at the bottom window there, it's just a simple momentum indicator, which is the monthly slow stochastic. Yes. And it turned back up in November, and it's still trending up. So the monthly charts are up. So, what a mind blower um, that would be, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So nobody, you know, really nobody's bullish out there. But you know, if we had a sign of strength through the neckline of the head and shoulders bottom, I mean, you got to assume, you know, it's, you know, I guess the quacks and it's waddles, it's a duck. So you know, if it's uh, it's a head and shoulders and it has sign of strength through the neckline, it's a head and shoulders. So I think in general we're going to work higher here. I don't have it shown here, but I do a, a lot of stuff with panic, and panic's a really good thing to, for a bull market to have. If you don't have panic, um, then you, you don't really have energy for the rise. Yes. And all through that that sideways pattern starting last May going into basically March, I have a different graph showing what the trend did all in that time frame over, you know, basically 10 months right there's a lot of uh, trend readings all through that area uh, all above like 1.2 i call anything but 1.2 a panic situation and there's tons of um, panic readings in the trend all on that level and if you do a 100 day trend uh, analysis or even a, a 63 day trend which is a three month uh, time frame you have readings over 1.2 all in that time frame. So what I'm saying is you got enough energy, in other words, not enough panic in the market to drive this uh, potential um, um, head and shoulders bottom higher. Because panic, if you don't have panic, you don't have energy. And so I'm, I'm thinking we, we, the sideways market since last May has enough panic in it to drive the market higher, according to uh, the panic readings. I do some stuff with the VIX, too, and it's, it's kind of... Sure, and I'm going to show time, them... We'll show some they, of that. So. I'm going to show them what you were looking at here, because this is cool, man. You know, you can see, folks, he was talking about the lows of 2020 going all the way up, and we did... I, I took the... Maybe I took the wrong... I, I took the low of March 2020, Tim, to the low, and it was exactly a 50% retracement, which is crazy, and the SPY. The the the, right. the 348, you know, it's like a 50% retracement. And it, what's going to get so interesting here, you know, when you have inflation, I mean, I, I know it's, it, it does sound bizarre that you can go back to the highs, but if inflation keeps going, it just means you have a higher number. It doesn't mean that we can buy more with it, you know? So this, right. al this always gets right. intriguing. Remember, I mean, I remember we, we were still doing business when Zimbabwe was going like the 13, 14, 26,000, remember? I mean, it was like, okay, hold it. You know, this is insane, okay? But the bottom line is that their money wasn't worth anything at the end of the route also. So, you know, yeah. Right. It's uh, it's really, you know, if you go go back to that Fibonacci retracement on the SPYs here. Yes. You know, if it went down to 61%, which it didn't, but if it did, the, the best it could do is get back to the old highs. Right. According to... That's what I learned. If it goes down to 50%, it at least goes back to the old highs, if not mark the halfway point of the next move up. Right. So if you do the halfway point of the next move up, you come up with SPY around 600. 
Uh, everybody will kind of laugh about that and how crazy I am for saying that. But, you know, time will tell. You time know? will tell, time man. Will tell. I, and, you know, uh, it's the same. I'm looking at this bond market, Tim, and, you know, I mean, uh, there's no doubt. I, you know, I've been a bear on the way down, but when this bond market starts turning, I'm saying to myself, my take is that the rates look to me, you know, that banking crisis, you know, came in hard, and it's like, okay, it looks to me like the rates have turned. I mean, we just went from 4% on the 10-year to 32 and 21 trading days. That's unbelievable. I mean, so it's like, okay, if rates are going down, then more than likely that means the dollar is going lower. I can see gold going higher. If the dollar is going lower, well, I can see the SPY going higher because yeah. that, that's the, that correlation yeah. is in. Do you know what I mean? So pretty wild, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty well. There's another thing, too. This is a pre-election year. Yes. And historically, uh, the pre-election year, in other words, next year is the, the election, obviously. Okay. But, uh, the pre-election year uh, has a 94% of being higher. Is that right? <laughs> so, wow. Yeah, okay. that's right, according to going back to 1950. Yep. So that's a real interesting. So you know, what, what that says to me, the government's going to try to keep this market up. Yes. You know, at least sideways. Right. Um, you know, after the election, you might see something different. But, you know, this market is probably going to be halfway stable, probably going into the election. Okay. So, so well, it may go sideways here. I don't know. Maybe hit the highs of 470 on the SPYs, you know, uh, and uh, build some sort of a trading range. And uh, that's a possibility. But in my opinion, at least over the next several months, I think possibly in July, um uh, Maybe August, we will at least see 470. Then from there, I don't know, you know, because he, he got, you know, seasonality. Hey, we'll take we'll September, take 470. We'll take we'll take 470. So, we'll take gold going up for a year and a half, right? <laughs> yeah, it is <laughs> totally. It, 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 we'll we'll talk a year from now, a year and a half from now, and there'll be some you know great investments. You know, this gold market's been dead for a while. It, yep, exactly. And but it, when it, it runs, we both know when something. it runs, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, Tim, so. thank you so much. We look forward to talking to you next Thursday. And, folks, you can get hold of Tim at ord, O R D, dash, oracle.com. Tim, you have a great uh, Easter, safe Easter, and we'll talk to you next Thursday. All right. Sounds good. Thanks so much. Bye. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.